Stud Doogie here with chapter 6 of my Dead Space 2 No Damage Playthrough and Zealot Difficulty. In chapter 5, we ended with uh, Isaac being miraculously blown out into space. Well, well, the miraculous part wasn't that he got blown out into space, but that he managed to get blown back into the space station uh, by an explosion that should have killed him, but We've already established that Isaac is just one lucky SOB. So we're going to start by going back into the area where we uh, ended the previous chapter in and collecting a node and some additional resources. And um, this chapter marks the introduction of uh, my favorite NPC, which is Ellie. And I want you to pay particular attention to the initial meeting between ourselves and Ellie because we're going to revisit that topic when we get to chapter 14 and uh, the, the EarthGov sector. Now I get turned around in this area so easily so you're going to see uh, a lot of use of the Wayfinder thingy. Yep. Input error. Turn your ass around, Doogie. Aye, aye, sir. See, you hear that yelling, that screaming, that, that growling in the background, so there's an expectation that something's going to happen. But instead, we get an alarm. Hilarious. Now, another interesting uh, point to note is sort of a design efficiency thing that Visceral has done here. The fact that we get blown back into the space station means they get to reuse assets we've already seen. So, you know, so they didn't have to create an entirely new zone for us. They can reuse an existing zone. So we've seen all of these things. They've been, you know, dressed differently but it, it's not new like so this is a pretty fun fight it's an interesting fight in that if you stick around you have to do more fighting than not stick around and i'll show you what i mean in here in a second i don't know how the hell that missed that's bullshit I'm calling bullshit on the play coach okay and we have to face these guys which are the most dangerous enemy in the game they are insanely fast moving for only having two limbs to move on. And now watch the door in front of us. It's going to turn blue, which means we could leave. There it is right there. It just turned blue. We could leave right now. Uh, but I've opted to stay and uh, kill some stuff because that's the whole point. You know, which is why I say I could never do a speed run because I don't know how to leave stuff behind. So, like, we could exit right now, but we're going to take these guys on. And notice where I'm aim aiming, because if we sh don't shoot that spot and hit them, uh, they'll leap and get to us. So this is pretty tight, pretty precise uh, to get this done. Got to hit it. Got to hit it. Because okay, he was right on top of us. Like, we're, we're off by a millimeter and we're screwed there goes our no damage run that one I got in the joint which is why it only took one shot didn't get him in the joint so we had to shoot him twice All right, then we got one more guy to deal with this dude and I don't know how that missed but whatevs alright we're good There's nothing particularly special in this zone. It's not like there's a schematic or anything, but I don't know, man. I like killing stuff. I don't understand the whole speedrun thing where people try to avoid most of the game because that's what a speedrun is. You try to find skips and things to that effect, which means you're not really playing the content. You're skipping the content. And, uh, that's not really my style. I like shooting stuff and picking up stuff and doing all that stuff. Yeah, that right there. Oh, my God. That shit scared the shit out of me the first time I played. Because, you know, I'm, I'm in this menu. I'm like, I 
quickly press escape to get out because I thought I was about to be attacked by something. But no. They were just trying to freak us out. And they succeeded. Tell you this game is so good. This game is just... If you like a good scare, you're hard-pressed to find a better game than this. Or this series. Like, one and two, really, really good. Three... I recently started playing it. It's so Hollywood. It's more sort of an action adventure game so far. I haven't gotten far enough to, to have a full sort of uh, review on it, but so far it feels not scary at all. But we'll see as I continue through it. But this one I have no complaints about. None at all. Except for a couple hit detection issues, but um, other than that, this kind of nails the genre of being a survival horror game. Uh, it, it did go a little Hollywood, you know, with some of these set pieces. But I liked, I liked the most of the set pieces uh, that they did because it was so well executed. I'm hearing I'm being stingy. But I, did, I don't really need to be. I could just shoot the thing two times, but whatever. Finally, I said, fuck it. Now, this guy that's coming up right here, we didn't have to shoot him because as he crawls towards us, he'll actually trip over the the, the zombie mine. That's what I'm calling those things. It's a, it's, it's a mine, you know, like a explosive mine, but it's a zombie mine. Finally. Now you can catch those things with telekinesis and use it as a projectile against your enemies. So we're going to finish upgrading our uh, javelin. So that's the, the last piece of that. And we're going to use this node to open up that node room. Now you're going to see me go over to the safe station as I contemplate doing a quick save. This way, if the node room uh, didn't have what I hoped it had, I could just reset. But I was like, screw it. Since I've upgraded my javelin, I'm feeling pretty good. I don't have to be as um, cheap, you know. I mean, this wasn't worth it, mind you, because a node costs $10,000, and we don't have $10,000 worth of stuff in here. But whatever. It's no biggie. Because it's a bronze. If it was uh, a ruby, then it definitely would have been worth it. We're about to get our node back. We just spent a node and got gypped out of that in that node room, but we're gonna recuperate a node here. I really like this uh, no gravity stuff in this game. I, th I think it's just so well done. Um, it's so cool to be able to zip around like Superman. I mean, these things a lot of times aren't really worth it unless you get cash because you're only getting like one ammo um, for the javelin and three for the plasma cutter. The plasma cutter may be worth it because we do sell most of that and get, I think, about 2500 for a full stack of 25 So the plasma cutter may be worth it for the its, its credit value, but the javelin's ammo definitely not worth it. Now my first couple playthroughs, like I said in a previous video, my game is darker than some of the stuff you might see in other videos. I could not see these guys, man. I would just get jacked up, you know. But we know, I know where they're going to be, and so uh, I can set up for them. But the first couple times, I would just get like destroyed by those guys.
This absence of sound is just so cool. It's just the breathing and the beeping. The sound design in this game is amazing. So here we go. Here goes a kind of reverse where uh, the guy is already in here. Oh man, the first time this dude jumped out at me. Sweet Jeebus. Sweet, sweet, sweet Jeebus. That was a good one. Isaac, the steps. He wants me to follow the steps. Step one, crawl into the dark machine. Strauss, calm down. He can't hurt you. He wants me to go into the dark machine, Isaac. I can't go. She's in there. She's waiting for me. Strauss. Now, there's one question in this game and telling of the story that I don't fully understand. When Strauss talks about she's waiting for him. Is it... It can't be Nicole, right? Because Nicole is specific to Isaac. It's his memory of his girlfriend. So it's got to be a different she. Like, who is the she that he's referring to? And when we finally get to that part of the uh, the story in the game, which is in chapter 14, there is a she, but it's Nicole. So it's just, it's kind of an unanswered thing for me. Who is the she? I suspect it may be Strauss's wife that he's referring to uh, when he says she's waiting for me. But I don't know. Fucker. Gotcha, bitch. Peekaboo, come get it. Suck it. Mm-hmm. Curiosity killed the cat. Watch him peek. Get his shit peeled back. Alright, that's that. Y'all can breathe a sigh of relief now. What's interesting about this room also is that it has a stasis recharge station. So one might think that there's something here for stasis. But, you know, like I said, I don't use stasis a lot. I'm going to use it in the later part of the game but in this earlier part I don't just doesn't feel necessary like in my first playthrough the play loop was whenever uh, it was time to engage an enemy you shoot stasis and then fire shoot stasis and then fire which means that we always have to have a stasis on hand which means I couldn't use it uh, as a as a as a way to, to get credit so we can upgrade my gear so I kind of figured out how to play where it wasn't stasis then fire, stasis then fire, and only use it under certain circumstances. And then you get kind of comfortable with it, you know, the stasis fire beat, stasis fire beat. To some extent it makes part of the game easy, and then it also makes part of the game hard because there are areas where there's simply too many enemies, or the way they spawn is such that um, it's faster than you can get your stasis out, you know? Okay, so we're getting close to our Ellie introduction here. So this is an example of what I'm talking about, them being able to reuse assets because we've been here before. This is exactly the same place, but now it's been dressed differently um, than the first time we were here. But it's fundamentally the same assets, so they get to reuse that, which is a pretty efficient way of, uh, of building the world. And it doesn't seem like it's being uh, reused to us, you know, because we're going a different direction. It's dressed differently. Uh, the story is progressing differently in, as we go through it the second time around. Okay, pay attention to our meeting with Ellie here. So th she has this, this distrust of us, rightfully so, because the last person tried to kill her. And she's just really, really cold. And remember, so remember this now. Her cold demeanor toward us. Ellie, 
and then we're going to see what happens in chapter 14. Because it didn't make sense to me at first, but I'm going to explain how things changed and or why they changed. Yeah, remember that line. I'll release the door lock. But after that, you're on your own. And please, don't follow me, okay? Wait, wait. She is not trying to make friends. I don't know what the hell I'm looking for. <laughs> mm. I was trying to catch it. I should have just used his body. Twofer. So I'm waiting to see if the worms come out of his body. They did not. Now we don't have to kill all of these. We just need to kill the ones that block our path like the one above us. But I'm going to kill them all because, uh, you know, life is worth killing. I totally forgot about the one above me. I missed it, bitch. Wow. Shame on that one. Nope. Screw it. Just shoot him. <laughs> I could have taken a limb off the guy up there, but I did not. Wait, what? He should have had a limb. That's the last of them. There's a node back there. We're going to get it. Mm-hmm. Give me your shit. Did I pick up the note already? Yep, 2500 for a full stack. Good to go. That's the benefit of wearing the police suit. You can carry all that stuff. And sell it all so you can upgrade quickly. Because we already maxed out our, um, our javelin. Now, right here is, without question, one of the most... Uh, I don't even know how to put it. It's, it's just crazy it's just good it's good it's terrifying it's sick it's twisted it's just just really potent kind of real horror type stuff and i didn't show it but um either play it or go back and watch it on someone else's video or something it really is disturbing and just a, a kind of just a powerful um 
a powerful visual, man. It, it, yeah, it, it messed me up. I was like, whoa, this game's in a whole new level. This game is in a whole new level. I'm assuming you know what I'm talking about, right? The, 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 the mother hugging her baby that explodes and kills her. And it's not like she doesn't know, but I know you get to a point where you're just, you're broken and you'd hug your dead child and self-destruct and uh, then reject it, I guess. But it was just like, it was just, yeah, it was disturbing. No lie. Like, it's as disturbing or even more so disturbing than the guy cutting his for his uh his own throat in the first ten minutes. Yeah, th this game has some really just fascinating set pieces. Um storytelling wise. Let's go. Once again, the javelin, javelin showing off its amazingness. I don't know, I think he's feeling, but this is our first introduction to the uh, the more powerful type enemies. These are the enemies that are burnt, and um, they do more damage, and they require more damage from us to take them down. So that's uh, an introduction to that. No, I, I didn't kind of fully realize that at the time it was just another enemy, but as the game progresses, they become those ones in particular are a pain in the ass to deal with when you're trying to do a no damage run because uh, when you destroy them, they, uh, they explode and they excrete this bodily fluid and the bodily fluid will do damage to you. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're a pain in the butt. I really blew the opportunity to use that um, time thing effectively. I should have used it when all the um, all the babies were in place, because then, oh yeah, that was a waste. Yeah, uh, because I could just use them to blow everybody up. I'm completely out of bullets. Now we got some. Three. <laughs> Make sure we stomp, get as much ammo as we can because we're already low. it up leave nobody unturned I say thousand dollars for my efforts You see that right there? You may fool Strauss, but I know you're not real. You know, which which begs the question, is Strauss seeing the same woman that Isaac is seeing? Oh my god, she's so fucking whiny. What about that, Isaac? You never have to listen to your heart. You know, that sounds like a repetitive argument a guy has with his girlfriend or his wife or ex-wife or ex-girlfriend. 
Which begs the question, was she really like that? Or is that Isaac's interpretation of her? Ain't that the truth? Twitchy. Neither do I, Ellie. Don't move. Ellie, I need him to be not dead. I need him. Shit. See right there, the walls start coming down. Right, because she didn't want anything to do with Isaac, and now she's uh, she's willing to help us out. This is a long ass elevator ride. I didn't notice that till now when I'm doing the commentary. I was like, I got nothing to say while we're hanging out in this damn elevator. Can't, yeah, open a freaking door. Thank you. My God. So, our, this is our second like boss fight for reals for reals. We've had boss encounters, but not really any boss fight. But we're about to have a boss fight. And this is the reason, this particular fight here is the reason. I've been upgrading um, the javelin and getting it to max level because it's going to make this fight a breeze. I like this little interaction right here. Engineer. Nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I like Ellie. Ellie's really cool. Ellie's good people. I really like this boss because it requires precision. You know, if you hit this outer shell, you just don't do any damage to him, so you have to hit your shot. Tadman is such a dick, but he's not a particularly scary protagonist. I mean, antagonist, because we're the protagonist. He is the antagonist. Got to hit him right in that sweet spot. Bye, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. So totally worth all that time we spent. Breaking everything, stomping everything, so that we can maximize our um, maximize our resource acquisition, so that we could get our javelin maxed out. Just so we could do that fight. <laughs> I really like Ellie. Okay. This will need power. Without it, we have no air and no train. The sprawl's gotta have backup batteries somewhere. Yes. The solar arrays up there. But they've been mothballed for years. Okay, alright, good. I'm heading there now. If I can start them up and get some power to the train. You'll need someone to open the collector panels. I can do that. Take straws and keep him safe. All right, we're getting close to the end of this particular chapter. Yeah, so there's, there's nothing much left to the end of this chapter. Um, we're going to go into this room. We have a quick little PTSD thingy. Oh, no, no, no. This is that first. And then we have the uh, the weirdest of all the enemies. Like, this, this enemy is just weird as shit to me. Like, how did that happen to you, bro? I feel like I did him a favor 
Like killing these guys is an act of kindness. You know, it doesn't feel violent to me. When I when I dismember the other ones, it feels like an act of violence. But killing these guys, it feels like an act of kindness instead of an act of violence. He should be thanking me. He probably is if he could. Chapter 7. All right. Once we get to the save point, it's done. I go into this menu because there's nothing better to do while we just wait for this stuff to happen. So a lot of times I just kind of go in there. Oh, yeah, we got to fight the two dudes. There's a better way to do it. I'm playing like a scrub right now. Because I got, I got a shit ton of freaking stasis. I could have just stasis his ass. And I did. <laughs> Usually I don't. But if you miss, you're screwed. to be them all right so we're coming up on the end here uh to thank you for watching and i will uh catch you in the next one